One of the big things that I've learned about business and being an entrepreneur and stuff is focus. YouTube channel is just over 418,000 subscribers. I kind of didn't, didn't expect anybody to pay for training because it's like, you can get that on YouTube. Hello, and welcome to the Art of Selling Online Courses. We're here to share winning strategies and secret hacks from top performers in the online course industry. My name is John Ainsworth, and today's guest is Casey Farris. Now, Casey's a YouTuber and online course creator that specializes in teaching video editing in an app called DaVinci Resolve. And over the last 10 years, he's built his YouTube channel from a fun side project to a full-time business. He runs groundcontrol.film with his co-founder and best friend, Dan. And together, they've created an online course business that's earned over a million dollars of revenue. Casey's mission in life is to inspire and empower creative people to express themselves and step out of their comfort zone. Casey lives in Oregon with his wife and three kids. And today, we're going to be talking about Casey's course business, about how he got it started, about his YouTube channel, how he's grown it up, and we're going to talk a lot about funnels as well. Now, before we dig into today's interview, I want to remind you how much your support means to us. We're here to make sure your podcast experience gets even better, and you can help us with just a quick favor. By taking a moment to rate and review the podcast, you can give us priceless feedback that helps us shape future episodes. Has the show helped you make money? Has it helped you grow your business or improve your courses? If it has, share it in the reviews. Go to ratethispodcast.com slash online courses. That's ratethispodcast.com slash online courses. Casey, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thank you so much, man. It's a, it's an honor to be here. It's very exciting. So I gave a quick summary of it, but tell everybody, like, who are you helping with the courses? What is DaVinci Resolve? Like, what mm -hmm. what is your audience and how are you helping them? Yeah, so um, I do I do courses uh, on DaVinci Resolve, which is a free video editing app. And it happens to be a very, very high-end video editing app. Um, chances are, if you've seen a movie in the theaters this year, you've probably seen a movie that was at least um, color corrected in DaVinci Resolve. It's kind of the king of, of uh, color correction. And um, it kind of started like that and then grew into a fully fledged app that uh, is very comparable with um, Final Cut Pro or uh, Premiere, um, the Adobe suite and that kind of thing. And, um, but the, the big thing is that it's free and it's really, really good. And um, so I jumped on that train um, gosh, almost about 10 years ago and uh, just started putting up tutorials. And that's, uh, that's kind of, it's kind of grown from there. And so now we sell courses on teaching how to use this program um, primarily to content creators and teaching people how to make cool stuff that didn't exist before um, without spending tons of money. And it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. How come you were able to start putting up these tutorials? What were you doing? What was your job at the time? Uh, my job is, uh, I was actually, I, I put up color grading tutorials first, okay. um, because I ended up learning how to do color, uh, just by kind of running my head against the wall. Okay. Um, I was using a different <laughs> app at that, at that point and working on, uh, working on a, a TV show that we were producing locally. Okay. And, um, I didn't, nobody else knew about color correction. And so I started learning about it. And then I realized that not a lot of people online learned about it either. And they didn't, they didn't know about it. Right. And that was when um, there was a big boom in an interest in color correction, but nobody knew how to do it. So that's when I started posting tutorials. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So you were working in TV production or film editing at the time? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Got it. And so why did you, but why were you putting it up on YouTube? Why were you putting videos up? Did you have like an ambition? Were you like, I want to grow this into something? Or were you just like, oh, I've learned how to do this. So I'll stick a video up. Like why, why bother doing that? Yeah. Um, it's funny because I started posting tutorials. It was way before that, actually. I was posting tutorials on some kind of software development stuff I was doing, and I didn't even know why. I I just enjoy <laughs> teaching. Okay. And I loved helping people. Uh, that's one of my main things is I, I love being able to help people do things that they haven't been able to do before. And so I found out, you know, I learned a little bit, and then I could put a little video on YouTube and some people will watch it and now they can do stuff that they couldn't do because of me. And I'm like, dang, that's really cool. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, cool. So this is one of the things I see really, really commonly with people, the kind of people who we're working with and who like resonate with us or who are course creators. 
is that they didn't start as a course creator. They they didn't start trying to make a business. They started as a teacher. And so they were just like, right. yeah. a lot of people were maybe like teaching in person. Like we've got a lot of language course creators we work with. And a lot of them started off teaching languages in person in Japan or whatever, right? You know, yeah. they're like, oh, they've gone to Japan. They're going to teach English because that's the thing that you can do if you're English. And then they're like, oh, this is really helpful, all the stuff I'm creating. Let me go and put it up online. And then after a yeah. while, it kind of then leads to something. And then like, oh, well, maybe I'll make some courses about this. As opposed to there's a whole nother group of people who were like, oh, course businesses are a good business to run. Let me go and make courses and then figure out how am I going to sell it? How am I going to build an audience for it? Which is like, a sure. it's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, it tends to be most of the people I talk to are kind of similar story to you. Mm -hmm. They like teaching. They wanted to teach. They wanted to get the stuff out there. And then they kind of went from there. Yeah. So I think it's easier to make something that's higher quality if you're used to teaching, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whereas like, and that's the thing is like, I've, I got really good at teaching and now I'm learning the business side of it, you know, and then you could be good at business and then have to learn the teaching side of it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's nice to know the teaching side of it because you know, you can put out something that's quality. Yeah. Right. Which is that, I mean, that's, it all comes down to that. I did my first uh, reaction video for YouTube today. So my, my oh. uh, I've got this guy who does uh, my YouTube videos with me. So he comes around with a whole bunch of ideas of what videos we're going to do. And then we kind of work out the scripts together and then I film them and then he goes off and edits it all and puts it up. And he's like, I want to do some, I want to do some reaction videos. And he shows me this one and I was just so angry. <laughs> <laughs> like depending on when what are you're you reacting to this podcast. To? So it was someone saying, if you're super broke and you just want to make some money, you can make money through selling digital products online. All you do is you go to ChatGPT and you find out what problems have people got, and then you go and make us you make a digital product to, to solve that problem. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What if you don't, what if you don't know how to solve that problem? You can't just yeah. start with oh, someone's got a problem. I'll make a pr product to solve it. It's like you yeah first become an expert in something that people actually yeah. care about. That might take I don't know three years or whatever now sure you then you go create the content and then eventually you make the course about it you don't just go oh yeah i'm just going to make something to solve this problem it's like that's yeah, how I you mean, end up there, with trash there at least has to ha you have to have some kind of crossover with things that you know you know you can't just be like oh yeah of course business analytics i know don't know anything about that but i'll just i'll just make that real quick <laughs> yeah <laughs> good luck good luck with that it sounds like madness Okay, yeah. so take us back. So how long, so it was like 10 years ago, right? You're putting up these videos about yeah. color grading. Was that mm -hmm. right, color grading? Did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. At what point did you start to get a bit of traction in terms of like the channel growing? Was that straight away? Did that? Did you put videos up for a year with no reaction? Like, what was that like? Oh, it was super easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was <not laughs> oh. Um, no, I, I started putting up videos and, you know, my friends would watch it, you know, and my family would watch it and they'd be really sweet and be like, wow, that's really nice, honey, you know? <laughs> um, but I, I ended up, I was actually, uh, I've, I've always wanted to make a living doing YouTube. And so, uh, I would watch sketch comedy and stuff on YouTube. And so I actually had three channels at the time and I was posting something. I was trying to post one a week to each channel. Uh, and so I had like a comedy channel, I had a tutorial channel, and I had a gaming channel with my friend. And I was just kind of like posting once every week or two on, on all of those channels. And um, obviously the education one I know now is a lot easier to um, get some traction on because people have a reason to search for it and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, I think it was just, I, I tended to um, just post stuff that I was interested in and that I felt like people didn't really know. Right. Um, <clears throat> I came at it from an angle of, um, hey, everybody says this one thing, but I'm telling you a different thing, which is always interesting. And uh, it ended up getting picked up by an industry blog, a uh, blog that shares things about video editing and production and stuff. And they shared it. And then that got a bunch of views and subscribers and stuff. And that was like the first moment where I'm like, oh, maybe this could like actually be a thing and not just a pretend thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it was, it was honestly a lot of just testing things out, throwing things out and, and seeing what worked and then trying to try to just do more of that. And at what point did you make your first course? 
it took a long time actually. Um, we we started making um, we, with our, our first digital products were color grading LUTs, which if people don't know what a LUT is, it's it's like a digital filter, kind of like when you put on a filter on Instagram. Um, it's sort of like that, but you can use it in a variety of different software, so it's it's pretty useful. Um, and so I would sell these LUTs that uh, basically make your camera look better, and um, we did that. That was like our bread and butter for, gosh, a long time, long time. Um, ended up going like full-time creator just off of selling those LUTs for 20 bucks. Um, it was a pack of LUTs. And um, it was probably, it wasn't until, gosh, probably like five or six years ago that we started really thinking about courses. And I ended up making a course. It was like a 20-minute course we sold it for i think it was like literally like seven or eight dollars okay uh and we're just like hey this is a mini training it's like it's like a 20 minute video and you can download these uh these assets and you can follow along and you know we didn't make tons of money on it it was okay Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a lot of work and it was it was just okay (laughs) but we did that a couple times and uh and then i ended up doing a a course that was we called it an end-to-end course, which is basically here's all the stuff to make a short film. And then um, so it's it's all of the video and the audio and everything. It's unedited. And then it was probably like two hours or so long. And it's showing you how to edit this short film and do the color grading and sound and all that stuff um, and effects and everything. And I put that up and that made a decent amount of money. And we went, wow, hmm. Maybe people will pay for courses. That's interesting. And this is before I knew that courses were a really good thing to get into, that you could make a lot more money doing courses than um, selling presets and things that everybody in the world sells. Because <laughs> there ended up being a lot of um, a lot of other people that were selling kind of the same things that we were. Right. And it was getting really saturated. So talk, talk us through. So when was this, This the bigger course, the end to end one? I think it was about 2015. 2015. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, so that's like nine years ago. Gosh, maybe it was. Dang. <laughs> Is that right? more time no, passed it was than you bro- realized. Gosh, yeah, I think so. Wow. Time. <laughs> so 2015, you make that end-to-end course. What mm-hmm. point, just take us back a couple of steps before that, when did you become full-time creator then? That had to be... I guess it was about that time also. Okay. Um, I I ended up quitting my job and inviting my friend to come and start a company with me uh-huh. um, off of money that was just generated from LUTs. Got it. Got it. So, okay. So yeah, it was about that time. When you launched that, do you remember about how much you made with that first that first launch, that course? Um, I want to say, mm-hmm. gosh, it's it was a long time ago. I want to say it was, I mean, the, the whole course I think was like 50 or $60 maybe. Okay. Okay. And, um, gosh, we probably made three or $4,000 on it or something. Okay. Something like that. And that was enough of the time that you were like, Ooh, well, there's something here. Yeah. Because I mean, we could make that off of LUTs too. And uh, honestly, we were making more on LUTs. But Mm -hmm. um, I kind of didn't didn't expect anybody to pay for training because it's like, you can get that on YouTube. You know, like, why would you pay for that? Um, But then, like, I started realizing, like, I can't really charge $100 for a pack of LUTs because, like, you can literally get, like, hundreds of LUTs for $10 on, Mm, you know, some marketplace or whatever. Yeah. And so it's just, like, starting to see the ceiling there and going, like, wow. But I do see people selling courses for $250 you know, yeah, and it's like, I know I can teach people. Like that's not that big of a deal, and so that's kind of where that mental switch happened for me. So take me through kind of where you're at now. What size is your YouTube channel now? Uh, YouTube channel is just over four hundred eighteen thousand subscribers. Okay, cool. Yeah, and is that your only channel, or do you also share content on other places as well? Uh, that's the only channel. Yeah, we share uh, tutorials about the same stuff. Nice. Just on that nice. channel. And how big is your email list at the moment? Uh, at the moment, 
Let me check her. I think it's about 22,000 or something like that. Okay. We just pared it down. Like we, we just got rid of a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. And what, how often are you, sorry, the next one then, how many courses do you have at the moment? Uh, right now we have kind of like one main course and then we have a bunch of kind of smaller courses. So our main course, uh, is sells for 850 Mm -hmm. and that is, uh, definitely our main, our main bread and butter, our main seller. Okay. And then we have, um, some courses that are like roughly related to it. Uh, there's, there's four other courses that are around the $250, $300 mark. Somewhere there. Okay. And how do you sell those? Are you doing email promotions? Are you doing webinars, launches? Like, what what does it look like when you're actually making a fuss of one of those and selling it? Yeah. Uh, so everything is marketed through uh, lead lead magnets mm-hmm. from YouTube. Yeah. Um, and then uh, people get on our email list, and we we have a e- whole email funnel set up and everything sequences and everything, and so. Um, and we email every day. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then do you do discounts on the courses when you- We do from time okay. to time. Uh, we're kind of rethinking that and, and not sure. I don't know, kind of go back and forth on that. Um, we've had obviously good good response to um, to discounting courses and everything, but we also have good responses, uh, you know, packaging bonuses, packaging upsells, yeah. um, that kind of thing. Um, we have our courses available all the time. There's mm-hmm. no there's no launching or anything like that. There's no real, it, it's all pretty evergreen. You can buy it whenever you want. Um, but we are running promotions um, probably every two or three weeks or so um, to get uh, get people in. And it's usually some incentive of, you, you know, you get this other course for 50% off or you get it for free uh, if you buy our main course. And uh, we're experimenting with different things like that. And how have you found that? Because that's super interesting. What we normally do, like the standard model we're using, is main course, put it on a discount for one week period while we're doing the the promotion around it. A lot of value-based emails around that topic and then um, some more sales emails over the course of the one week. And we will put, we'll add bonuses, but we generally don't do it without the discount. So how have you found that in terms of the results that you get when you have a discount versus when you have bonuses for a limited time? Uh, honestly, like trying, trying out this, uh, this kind of new funnel model, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't really have enough data. Okay. Uh, we've only done a few promotions so far. Um, I know that anytime that we have a discount and a, uh, a, like a countdown timer mm-hmm. that that obviously that works yeah all the time um but i i found that if i do a discount and then a few weeks later i do a discount it you know the second one doesn't do as well obviously but um so i don't know let's i'm not opposed to discounting but um i'm still kind of trying to figure out mm, what's going to work the best and, and we're talking about maybe like splintering one of like our big course mm-hmm. and seeing uh, if people want to buy like the first part of it and then upgrade later or something like that. And we're, that's kind of like at the point where we're sort of figuring stuff out right now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, any, any advice or help on that is definitely welcome. Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. What we found is there's all, all these different people that talk about all these different tactics. You know, there's like webinars and Facebook lives and do discounts and add bonuses and have a countdown timer and have value-based emails and have urgency emails and all that. And the thing is, they all work. They all work. And if you do all of them in one big go, then it works the best. But the problem mm. with that is that's a pain in the butt to do. Like if you do a sure. full launch, right, you have a challenge and lives and webinars and emails and everything, it you just end it exhausted. And so yeah. like, that's like mm-hmm. too far because we've done that with clients before. We've had like $200,000 launches and it was just like, they were just shattered at the end of it. We're like, well, that's no yeah. fun. And if the launch does badly for any reason, anything goes wrong, they just so stressed because that's where all their money's coming from with that one thing. Yeah. So our model, as you've probably heard me talk about in the podcast before, is like every month do an email promotion of something. 
and mm-hmm. then the model there is and you're talking about you've got discounts and you've got bonuses well they both work and the trick would probably be yeah like look at okay well we did this one with an email promotion of this one and we with the discount and we did an email promotion of the same course with a bonus where did we make the most sales where do we make the most revenue how did it do etc i think mm. the slight advantage to doing the bonuses is you can cycle through different bonuses and then you don't have someone thinking oh i know i could just wait because in three months i'll get the same offer again sure You've yeah got kind of a different reason to go ahead and do something right now um but the advantage of a discount is it's like oh someone was thinking about getting it and now it's less money it's like oh well, they're more likely to be able to afford it so that's kind of the the, the pros and cons with it i mm-hmm. would say probably like the the simple answer without doing more testing would be do the discounts because that's like what's the most proven um mm-hmm. but if you get data and it shows different stuff around the the bonuses then i am super keen to you know to see that and kind of see how it's worked and, and what's gone on there well it's funny it's it's i mean it's honestly way easier for us to do a discount you know i mean uh, i could you know put up a email campaign doing a discount pretty easily you know and we have a we have people work, working on you know creative stuff and and um graphic design and all that stuff so it's like pretty easy to just make that be a thing it's yeah. a lot easier than packaging a bonus and you mm-hmm. know making a, a promo video for the bonus and the you know the combo pack and all that stuff uh plus you need you need more um more content more things to package with it you know and that's <laughs> that's time and energy too yeah and so i mean like ideally i would love to just do a sale every month you know and but my fear and this is this is a fear because i've learned a lot of this is like man what are you afraid of doing that still works and works really well, but like you're just hesitant to do it? You know, like one of the things is like emailing your list more often, like afraid to do that, but it's been really great. Um, but like I'm afraid to put a discount on something every month, let's say, because I don't want people to be like, well, why don't I just wait three weeks? <laughs> yeah, I you wouldn't know? do the same thing every three weeks that's for sure mm. like i find about every three months maybe maybe ideal world six months um in between doing a discount on the same course but i like saying that we did have one course this is an extreme example we had one course that we promoted 10 times each time with a discount to the same list in a year for a client because they only had one course and they needed to make money and what we had to do our copywriter monica who's just phenomenal yeah, came up with 10 different hooks, 10 different angles, 10 different reasons why you would be getting this thing. And every one of those promotions did better because she kept learning more about the audience and kept improving. Eventually, it started to die off. And she was like, I can't. I was like, I've got nothing left. I can't do this thing. <laughs> I've squeezed it for all they've got. <laughs> yeah. But the, the having a different angle, having a different approach, a different reason why someone should get it now, you know, mm-hmm. like it's the new year. New year is a time when you want to be learning a new skill. This is the new skill that you could be learning. Now's the time to take action on it. Gives you a whole different email promotion to, yeah. um, it's Black Friday. We're going to give our biggest discount on it right now. And then another one might be, there's a new version of the software that's just come out. This puts everybody back on a level playing field. If you go and learn this now, then that's a great time. Or, you know, lots of people are thinking about going off to college. If instead of going off to college, you went and learned this instead... That would actually allow you to make more money than I don't. Know, I'm making stuff up here. I have no idea if it's true, so it's but not, like you know, are you, are you saying that it's less about the, um, the the coupon and more about the reason why people oh, would take yeah, that coupon? Yeah, hundred percent. The discount is like it's not the it's not the main point of the promotion. The discount mm. is a, a, like an extra reason why you should get it right now. And the discount's going to finish at a specific time, end of that second week of the you know value value emails for one week promotional emails for one week at the end of that second week that is finishing and you've got a countdown timer and something's going away and that gives someone a sense of urgency but the sense of urgency isn't the reason why they get it the reason why they get it is because something yeah. is going on in their life there's a there's a benefit there's a thing that they get from it and you can talk about different reasons why now is the time to deal with that problem or to to get better at that skill or what have you and the discount is like a minor, is a relatively minor detail in terms of in the emails. Now it does and, matter. Yeah. You need something there to kind of hook it onto. Like why is it? Why is it right now? I mean, you, hypothetically, you could do that whole thing without a discount. 
but then at the end of the second week there's no countdown because <laughs> you're like <laughs> sure there's there's, there's good, and that countdown timer helps someone to go like i've got i've got to focus i've got to decide on this and take action now yeah yeah that makes sense so it's it's more like it's more like the final nudge rather than the huge push yeah 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 because we're not That's giving like 80 percent off we're going like you know 30 percent off probably you know yeah. maybe more a black friday or something but it's like it's not a life-changing amount of discount to it um they could buy it at full price in a few weeks time you know it's no big deal like for example monica when she was doing um i think the course was about self-love and one of the hooks that she did was based around the olympics so the olympics was going on at the time i, I don't know which one this would have been tokyo i guess so 2021 um mm. and so there was something going on in the news about that everybody's thinking about what's happening with the olympics people are watching it people are thinking about it there's this particular story about you know some athlete who is an incredible athlete but had i don't know self-harmed or some some terrible you know not obviously not in a happy person and it was talking about yeah. you know, even if you're super successful you can still have all of these things going wrong so therefore let's talk about self-love and why that's so important and why you need to actually uh do something about that right now mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and that had nothing to do with the discount but there was a discount on top of that as well interesting yeah yeah, because I guess I've been thinking about a discount as like, that's the main attraction, mm -hmm. you know? But I mean, and it's like, I, I've kind of played around with like the warm up emails and everything. It's like, let's present this problem. And then you know, in a couple of days, I'm going to have a solution to the problem and everything. Um, and I think that like, that's a, that's a really interesting, because it's not as intuitive to, you know, send a promotion about that kind of thing, but it does make more sense. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, this is so. Always one of the reasons stuff. why a lot of people don't do promotions on a regular basis is because they don't want to feel salesy and spammy. And the reason mm -hmm. why they think they will feel salesy and spammy is because all of the email promotions that they ever send are salesy and spammy because they're yeah. the obvious ones to send. Because what can you do? There's a discount. I don't know what to say about it. There's a discount. There's a discount. There's a discount. Buy, buy now, it. buy now, buy now, right? At which point you're like, well, if I was getting those emails, I'd probably be a bit irritated by the end of it. Mm -hmm. So the trick is, yeah, how can you do a mixture of providing value and moving somebody towards the sale at the same time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing that I've I've been picking up, um, especially like listening to Monica, um, is is the idea of coaching, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're not selling, you're coaching yeah. people. Yeah, and that's like I've really taken that to heart. I have it on my like my board um, of like, hey, this is all about coaching. And from everywhere in the uh, in, in the course, there should be coaching. You know, it's not just selling people, it's not just teaching people, but it's like being their friend and being along with them and helping them um, to have that result. And I think that's that's like the coolest way to think about it. And I'm right. still like wrapping my mind around <laughs> doing that because <laughs> again, it's unintuitive, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not just obvious. It's not just sat there waiting for you. But if you really take that approach then the whole things work so much, so much more easily, you know? Yeah, I love that. Get me fired up, man. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> this is one of the things, right? So so I run this event called DCX London, and it's in, uh, it's in London in the summer. And tickets, the first time that we ran it, tickets sold out in like four weeks. And so the next time I was telling everybody, you need to get the ticket because they're going to sell out. You need to like make sure that you're aware of when it's going available. Because people were saying to me, oh, that I hadn't realized they were available. I didn't buy the ticket. And then I didn't get to come and it's a real shame. And I was like, that is a real shame. That yeah. matters. Yeah. That's sad. I wish you would have been there. That would have been really cool. So then the next time I'm telling everybody about this, I'm like, as a service, let me see what I can do. So I set up a WhatsApp group where I was telling everybody, look, the ticket's going to be going on sale. They're going to go and that's going to be frustrating for you if you don't get them it's going to be a great event you're going to really enjoy it if you come if you don't buy them now then they're good they're not going to be available and then they all sold out in a week and everyone's saying to me you're like such a hype man and you're giving everybody so much fomo and you're like i'm like it's a service this is <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just seen... trying to tell you <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've seen future you i because of yeah. my privileged position of being the person who runs the event I've seen all the people who were frustrated because they didn't get a ticket and then they wish they got a ticket. And I'm yeah. trying to save you 
from that future version of yourself not being good. And then... <laughs> like you're about to be dumb yeah please don't <laughs> don't be dumb yeah <laughs> i can help you here and so then every year it like goes every, more and more people get excited about it because it's such a great event as well like it's not mostly due to me noel and shona who run it with me are like phenomenal at running it but um every year it goes faster and faster and i'd said it for, to everybody for like nine months and then we had people this time who said who you know so we had the whatsapp group we're ready we're all good to go the last year it sold out in 24 hours and um, so this time I was like, you need to be in this WhatsApp group. You need to be ready on the day to buy it. You need to be prepared. And then it sold out in under an hour. And then people after like, who came along after like two or three hours, I'm like, oh, I thought there'd still be tickets now. I'm like, I've been telling you for nine yeah. months. <laughs> like, can you please <laughs> freaking listen? You cannot complain to me. I said to you, I said specifically, this is going to happen. You yeah, need to yeah. be ready. <laughs> so oh, I think it's awesome. like, when you're coaching your audience, it's the same. Like it's if, if you understand that you are in service of them, that you yes. are not trying to flog your junk, you are trying to help <laughs> them make their life better. You've got something fantastic, does, right? That's how people up. feel. What does flog you your junk? junk mean? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you just, just hold on a minute. Uh, this is a English expression, is it? Okay, so flog means to sell, like on a market stall. Like if you were like selling something that it, and you're like just after a quick buck and you're like just trying to but it basically means sell mm. but it's a slightly derogatory term for selling and junk yeah. is like rubbish you know stuff that's not yeah good. sure so yeah, you does not are... sound like that <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to help people it's like you you've got to you, you can make their future life better yeah and so you've got to think okay what needs to happen for them to, I can see their future self because you've been making this course for like 10 years, right? You, yeah. You've you seen how much better people's life is after they take the course and they've learned how to do the thing and now they're, they're good at it because they took the course. So you yeah. know, you can see their future. They can't see that yet because they haven't seen all these other people. They haven't yes. been through all of that. You can help. You can help them to understand what that future is going to be like and how much better their life will be. And it's your responsibility to, to support them through that but it's not easy for them because you've seen it a hundred times or a thousand times or whatever and they've never yeah. seen it so you have to use stories and coaches uh, coaching and examples and data and all these things to to allow them to be able to view that future and believe in it and when you yeah, understand that sure. kind of philosophy then thinking of the way that you're running an email promotion is like completely different to oh i need to make this many sales yeah yeah Exactly. And it's more, it's more humanity too, you know, it, yeah. you feel better about it anyway. And it's more helpful. <laughs> it's a win-win. Yeah. 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 And if they don't buy it, and like most people, like 99% of people in any email promotion you run are not going to buy. So you've mm -hmm. then got to think, well, okay, how do I also make sure these emails are useful for them? Yeah. Because otherwise I'm yeah. just filling up someone's, you know, if they're not going to buy it, I'm just filling up their, their inbox and I'm wasting their time, you know? And 90% of people will never buy from you. And you could think, well, they should, you know, it's fine if they go off their email list, which is also true. But it would be lovely if you could also help those people who never yeah. buy from you to still have a better life and to still, you know, like get some value from your email promotions. Yeah, I think it's that's something I've been thinking, like trying to do lately is if I send an email, yes, there's a call to action. But if you just read the email that you get value from it. Mm -hmm. Like you, you become a better artist, a better person just from reading the email. Yeah. You know, I think that's, and, and that's the way, like, I think the way to, you don't get people unsubscribing as much. You don't get yeah. people annoyed at you. Cause it's just like, what are you going to be mad? Cause I'm nice to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So what's any of your, your goals going forward? Cause there's something you were saying to me before we got on air about how you're kind of shifting your role within the business. Could mm -hmm. you could you tell everybody about that? Oh man, this will just this is a whole soapbox. I don't think you're ready for. <laughs> uh, so, um one of one of the big things that I've learned about business and being an entrepreneur and stuff is focus. I mean, you you have to be able to focus. You have to be able to um say no to things. And that I think the, the people that are better at business and that I think are 
um, less stressed people, happier people tend to say no to things. <laughs> mm-hmm. The people that are I've in my life that I've seen that are more stressed and you know crazy is like th- those are the people that say yes to everything or are excited about everything, right? And so I've begun mercilessly cutting things out of my life in general, but especially my professional life and things that I spend time and energy on, right? And so um, when I started. I mean, it was just me running the YouTube and then we had, uh, then I had, uh, the website. And so I was doing, you know, everything that's involved with business stuff, doing taxes, doing emails, do everything. And it, it was, uh, a major shift. This was about 2020, Mm -hmm. um, a major shift. Um, because when uh, I started with my business partner, we basically, instead of him taking over and helping me, we kind of just started like another wing of the business and made two. So the design was to make like two of me, right? And so Dang. we would both be doing everything. And that was fine, but we were really stressed and it just took, it was just draining, right? And one day uh, I realized like, wow, we're doing a bunch of stuff that is not joyful, not helpful. You know, um, he was making tutorials and he hates making tutorials. Like he is not, he doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Right? He's a good teacher, but he doesn't want to do that. And I was like, and I told him a couple of times, like, dude, we have to make tutorials to market our stuff. We were, we were selling sound effects. Like we have to do that. And I had to come back to him and like, dude, I'm like repenting of that because I shouldn't have, have brought you into that because that's not natural for you and it's not going to be good and it's not great. Anyway, so we learned through all of these uh, things that, like I said, about in 2020, I I was still like managing the website, responding to all the emails, um, and doing uh, all of the uh, YouTube videos, uh, recording them and editing them and posting them. And like, I was doing like everything and I wasn't even like letting my business partner do very much. And our friend needed a job and he's like, Hey, I know how to edit video. Can I help you guys? And I'm like, huh, I guess you could edit some videos that I have, you know, but that was really hard Mm. to give away the reins because I, I realized I really want control over a lot of stuff. And so, um, I ended up giving him the job and letting him edit and he, paid for himself just in YouTube revenue, like the first two weeks. <laughs> like it was such a no brainer. Of course this was lucky cause it was 2020 when just everyone was watching everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, we we're just like, wow. It, this, I'm just like, I'm really dumb. Like for not <laughs> doing this earlier, like what, what a mistake, you know? And so that got me into this, into this mode of like, all right, what else can I stop doing and give away and hire people for and, and get help with? and stop doing. And so I went from doing everything to basically doing two things. I work on the funnel and I record videos. And then I hand the videos off to other other people on the team that do the rest of it. And so I I like to say like I do two things a day. <laughs> because that's how I stay sane and that's how we can put out a lot of content um without just being stressed all the time. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's a big thing. So the funnels is kind of your thing now. That's like, are you completely in charge of it? Are you writing everything? Are you like designing the pages? Are you doing the tech setup? Like what parts, is, what do you actually work on? Yeah, it's uh, it's mostly like the the strategy for it um, and and writing the emails. And so I'm, I'm the main face on the YouTube. And so it makes sense that the emails come from me and are personal from me and everything. And that's part of kind of the personal brand is just my attitude and stuff like that. And so... Um, we had somebody else writing emails for a while. She absolutely did not like it, didn't mm. feel good about it, you know? And so, but I was always really excited about it. I'm like, Hey, you know what? You just write an email about this. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? And so once I kind of took over the reins and writing the emails and stuff, I'm, I'm like, wow, this feels great to me and it's helping the business and she can do things that she actually likes. Yeah. And it's just, it's just better. It's, it's about finding the balance, like what people are. Um, excited to do and what they're good at. Where's that mixture, you know, Mm -hmm. and what does the company need? And that's been the hardest part of learning how to run a company and be a big boy and pay taxes (laughs) and worry about revenue and junk like that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. 
And do you think that's something you'll hold on to, like the actual writing the emails? I really like it, okay. honestly. Um, I, I probably will. I could definitely see like working with a copywriter or something, mm -hmm. um, but I would probably like outline the emails or something like that. Um, yeah, because it, it, it's funny because there's, it, it's hard for me to tell just again, because of probably experience and not knowing just, I don't know what I don't know, mm -hmm. but I, I, I wonder how many things I'm like, all right, this is appropriate for me to do. This is the best thing for me to do. And which things I'm still being stupid about and yeah. I'm like yeah, yeah, not yeah. giving the reins over just because I feel like I need it, you know? Yeah. And copywriting is a really interesting one, right? Because there are quite a good number of good video editors out there. There are not many good copywriters. There are mm. lots of people who, who identify as copywriters. <laughs> You know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> they have that written on their LinkedIn profile and they put it at the bottom of their email signature. And it's like, technically, they are writing copy, but they yeah. suck. You know, yeah. they really suck at it. And people are charging quite a lot of money for it. So it's harder to find someone who can then write the emails for you. And then the second part, who's, who's actually good at writing sales emails. And then the second part of it is that then they need to write in your style. Yeah. It needs to sound like you. If they're coming from you, it has to sound like you. It has to be your tone of voice. It has to be the kind of words you'd use. It has to be the length of sentences that you'd... You know, all of these kind of things, right? Yeah. Which is on top. Also really difficult. And some of that takes time. So if you're testing somebody to do the copywriting for you, it could be that you've got someone great, but it still takes a month or two before it actually starts to work right. Sure. It's like, whew. That's frustrating, you know, to go through that process. Yeah. But if you find someone who's actually good, then they can write emails that will make lots more sales. You know, I, I don't know. I haven't gone through your numbers in detail, right? You might be crushing it with your emails. But for most people that I see in the course creator mm -hmm. space, they, even if they've gone through, listen to all of the episodes we've had with Monica and they go through and they use all of our templates and whatever, they still are like, okay, that's cool. Because that's great. You're like a five out of 10. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Great. That's got you way forward, way further forward than when you were two out of 10. But someone who's actually like a nine is just going to absolutely crush them. You know, like the yeah. amount of sales that they're going to bring in from it. Um, and then there's a whole lot of strategy that goes kind of with that as well. But then that's getting outside of the, re the realm of just the, the pure emails. So it is tricky to know when is that time. One kind mm -hmm. of good rule of thumb is to look at what percentage of your engaged list are buying. And if hey. it is about 0.3% of your engaged list who buy the course from you, then you are probably got pretty good emails and sales page and checkout page. Now, it doesn't tell you if it's not 0.3%. It doesn't tell you, well, which one of those is, is dropping off. Like the best conversion rate we've ever had, I think is about 1.52%. Um, but a normal email promotion for most people, most of the time, is about that kind of 0.3%. And then that's like, okay, you, you're, you're doing well. Um, you have to make sure it's the engaged list, like some people who have actually been opening emails in the last kind of three to six months. Um, sure. Rather than just, you know, if you've got a massive list and you haven't cleansed it. I know you do cleanse yours, but... Um, so that gives you kind of an idea of how you're, how you're faring. If you're at like 0.05, then it's like, okay, no, there's something that you could make massive jumps forward here. Gotcha. Yeah. I have to look into that. So I, I'm, I'm curious to see that. And, and is that like on a, on like a promotion itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. During the promotion. You mean? Yeah. Mm. I'm just trying to do some maths for you on like, and it does vary depending on like, well, which price course are you selling? Cause obviously that makes a massive difference on it. But if you're taking sure. like, I would assume it's easier for somebody to just hit checkout on a $57 product, you know, yeah. than a, $800 product. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It totally is. The numbers do go down. They, they, it's not linear. So if you've got, uh, if you're selling a course for 79 and then you're selling another one for hunt for $200, okay. then the $200 one will have a lower conversion rate, but it'll make more revenue because the conversion yeah. rate hasn't gone down as much as the price has gone up. So hmm. ballpark, I'm just putting in, if you said a 20,000 person list with a 0.3% conversion rate, a $300 course, 
then that's like an eighteen thousand dollar promotion. So that kind of gives you an idea of like that's the the kind of numbers that you'd be. Um, yeah, we're definitely not hitting that. That's uh, yeah, we got some so, something to make up there. But yeah, but I'm I'm learning too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, wow. I mean we've we've probably done that during like Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, done done that for sure. But um, but again, I mean that's dude. My first my first Black Friday promotion ever, not knowing anything literally like changed the world for me <laughs> and literally all i did was i put out an email that said hey black friday is a thing here's the here's the here's the yeah. whatever it was the the, the let pack you know and made like 800 times more than i usually make or whatever <laughs> i was like oh there must be something to this promotion thing yeah <laughs> yeah black friday is fascinating as most people have got like one or two spikes a year in their sales and if you look at the sales and you say, oh, what was it that caused that spike? I, or, I know the answer is because someone that didn't, did an email promotion with a discount. And one of them was Black Friday. Yeah. And, and I was like, do more. Do more of those. Figure out how to do mm-hmm. that well. That's a thing that works. Do it more. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Man, thanks so much for coming on today, Casey. I really appreciate your time and you coming in and sharing your story with everybody. This has been really good fun. Um, if people heard this and they want to get some more of your wisdom, where should they go? Yeah, um, I'm on YouTube. It's just Casey Ferris. That's F-A-R-I-S, like Paris with an F. And um, yeah, if you Google my name on YouTube or yeah, if you YouTube my name, that should come up. Um, and my courses are at groundcontrol.film. Nice. If you found this interview useful and you want to get future episodes, please subscribe wherever you listened. Uh, we really appreciate your time coming along and taking part and uh, listening in. And please, please, please go and leave us a review. That would be awesome. Just need to go to uh, ratethispodcast.com slash online courses, and that would be fantastic. Uh, Thanks, as always. And then, Casey, thanks so much. Of course. Yeah, thanks for having me on.